Hey, it's Luca from EDM Prod. You guys seem to be really enjoying the creative style tutorial, so I thought I'd do another one, this time on LFO Tool. If you don't know what LFO Tool is, don't worry, we're gonna be covering some more basics and understanding stuff first, and then as the video progresses, it's gonna become more creative and advanced, so stick around. If you want some free music production resources, go check out that free downloads link in the description. But otherwise, let's get into the video. All right, so what is LFO Tool and how do we use it? Uh, I'm just double click, pull it up here. It looks like this. And I'm just gonna go over a brief overview of everything. Uh, everything that we need to know, it's not gonna be the most in-depth tutorial that you've ever seen. Uh, just a few of the main functions and then we'll jump into some other stuff. So first of all, in the center here, we have this graph here. And this graph, we can move these nodes around and, uh, and actually shape this as, exactly as we like it. If you double click, you'll make a new node. And if you double click on a node, you'll delete it. Uh, there's these little handles here that allow us to drag the uh, the lines around and make them curved. If you click a node and then hold option, it'll snap to the grid in the background. You can change that grid. We're going to talk about that in a moment. But uh, if you hold shift, you can also draw a straight line depending on uh, on what your grid settings are. So this also is snapping to the grid. So I'm just holding shift and clicking around. You can also drag and um, yeah, it'll make these straight lines, which is pretty handy. So now I've got this crazy shape, but there's also some preset shapes as well. If we click on this little shape button, you can look at the basic like flat uh, 125. This is just like uh, a percentage value. So 50 is gonna be a flat line, just straight in the middle. And then we can also go into this sidechain folder and choose the sidechain shape. So this is the default one that it loaded up with, but there's also some other ones. Uh, this one's a pretty cool one and uh, there's just, you know, some different inspiration for different side chain shapes and some other stuff in there. So you see on the left here, there's this vertical blue line. And if we hit the space bar to play my project, then you'll see this blue line will move across the graph. It's moving really slowly at the moment because I have the rate set at four bars. So this rate knob down here actually determines how quickly the blue line moves and how quickly the LFO cycles. So now you can see as this vertical blue line moves from left to right, you can also see this, that there's like a visual representation of how the parameters are gonna be modulated over here on the right. So this blue line moves up and down over here as well. So now we know this rate slider affects how quickly the LFO is cycling. There's a lot of different rates that we can choose to make things a bit more simpler. I usually just turn off these two boxes here. This one triggers the triplet. So if I move this to the left, you can see this little T uh, stands for triplet. This one um, also triggers the dotted note. So if you don't want to use those, then you can just turn them off and then it's just going to be really nice and simple for you. You can also unsync it from the tempo by hitting this anchor button. And you can see now it's free moving and we can trigger this to, to trigger, you know, unsynced rates, Hertz waves instead of, um, instead of rhythmic variations depending on our host tempo. But for me, the most useful is to keep these two on and then turn these two off. And then we have nice simple values that we can use. All right, so if I play this right now, the blue line is moving, but there's nothing really happening, and that's because nothing is routed over here. So this LFO routing section is where this where this shape starts to actually modulate our sound. So if I drag the slider to the right, it's going to become a positive value. And if I drag the slider to the left, it's going to become a negative value and affecting whatever parameter is over here. So VOL stands for volume, and we can affect or modulate the volume with the shape on this graph by just dragging the slider to the right. So this is a sidechain shape. So now it's starting to create this pumping effect that you get from a sidechain compressor. And we can also map all the other things here as well. So we can map pan. Uh, for pan, uh, this mid center point is gonna be center of your sp stereo spectrum. Up is gonna be right, down is gonna be left. So this is gonna be sort of more swaying towards the right hand side when I map this. 
We also have cutoff and resonance that we can modulate as well. So for that to take effect, what you need to do is actually uh, turn on this filter here, click this button, and then you have to click on this panel and it will show you the representation of this filter. We have all these different filter modes here that we can choose from and we have this cutoff and resonance value here. And then this is how much you want the cutoff and resonance to move via the uh, LFO graph. So if you hover over or click on this one, and if you click or hover over on this one, then it's gonna swap between the two. And you can see now when I route this, it's gonna start moving this filter. Same with the resonance if we wanna do that. So it'd probably be easier to see if I turned this off and then just boosted the resonance, see it moving. We also have this depth control, which is like a dry wet knob or like a mix knob for our LFO routing. So we can just have like 50% of all of the routing things that we have set up, or we can have a hundred or whatever we want. And finally, there's a snap function here. And uh, that just controls the grid size in the background, which is kind of hard to see. But if I was to put it onto like two and then, uh, and then hold shift and click, you can see now there's just like two grid there's just one grid line through the middle and then you know if you put it up to like something like eight then now we have it seg segmented into eight different grid lines okay so let's talk about how we can use lfo tool for a side chain or ducking effect i'm just going to quickly make this kick drum uh, midi pattern like a four to the floor pattern so it's a little bit easier to see and then we're going to sidechain the bass to this kick drum or duck it or make this pumping effect. So I'm just gonna drag on LFO tool here. This initial preset that loads up is already a sidechain. It's already ready to go. All you need to do is drag this node up and down depending on how intense you want the sidechain effect to be. So let's have a listen. So up here is no effect. If I drag this down, it's going to start pumping. So you can hear there's some clicking going on. If you want to resolve that, you can just drag this smooth knob up. Or you can um, grab onto this node up here and then just drag it to the left just a little bit. So I've just dragged it to the left a teeny bit there. And now there's no clicks. Great, so this is our sidechain effect. It's as simple as that. Um, you can also choose different sidechain shapes if you want. So have an experiment, experiment with which one works for your track, but I usually just stick to this main shape and then just customize it depending on what I need. So let's have a listen. I'm just gonna open the filter up so it's a little bit easier to hear. All right, so now it's pumping to the kick drum and the side chain's all working. If we wanted to take this a step further, you can use this split function here. That's gonna split the frequency spectrum so we're just side chaining one portion of it. So in this case, we have this number here and this slider. So this number here represents a Hertz value. And if I was to put it down to you know 300 here, then it's going to only side chain what's below 300 Hertz. So for the example, let's drag it up and have a listen, it's gonna sidechain everything. And then as I drag the slider down, have a listen to the top end and how it stops pumping and the low end continues to pump. So this is a cool effect because we're ducking the low end out of the way of the kick drum, but still maintaining that top end of the bass. Okay, so now we're gonna use LFO tool in like an audio editing way. And we're gonna look at how we can use it to clean up this uh, percussion loop that I have here. So let's have a look. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. And if you can't see the waveform already, all you need to do is just click this little button here. It's gonna reveal the waveform in the background. And I'm gonna make the rate a bit bigger, maybe one bar, and then just change the shape to something basic, just a flat line. So now you can see what the loop looks like in the uh, in audio. 
in the background. And I know that this one is a clap and this one is also a clap over here. I know that this one here and here and here and here, they're all um, open hats. And so it's actually really easy to use LFO tool to, if I don't want a hat in a loop, I can actually take it out really easily. If I hold shift and make sure my snap functions are on the right setting, I can actually click and hold and drag down. And it's actually gonna take that element out of the loop. It's just gonna mute it for that section. So let's say I wanted to take all like these hats out of the loop. I could just go like this. It's a bit dramatic, uh, so I can put them back up. Or let's say I just wanted to quieten them down a bit. I could take them out again like this, and then I could maybe bring back the depth a bit. So let's say I wanted to take the clap out this time. I, know I can actually change the rate to like half a bar because I know the clap is repeating every half bar. And then I can hit play to get the waveform up. And I know that this one is the clap, right? So I could change the snap function to four this time and then hold shift again and then just click and drag down and it'll take that clap out. So I think what I wanna do is make this clap a little bit quieter and and also make these hats quieter as well. Make this one a little bit louder than this one. And I'm actually gonna change the snap function back to eight now and then bring this one up because this is like a little perk that I wanna maintain in the loop. I can maybe bring it down a little bit. I could maybe even bring this one down a bit. And maybe even just bring the depth back a bit. I could uh, do straight lines if I wanted. I could do curved lines if I wanted. Maybe it'd make it a bit more natural. And then now we can have a look at the difference between before and after the use of LFO tool here. So now in the loop, it just sort of sits a little bit nicer and uh, makes a little bit more sense in the context of the other drums. So our next technique, we're gonna be using LFO tool as like a modulation source for these uh, hi-hats. I'm just gonna make them sort of feel a little bit more moving and less stagnant and stale and robotic uh, just with LFO tool and the inbuilt filters that we have in here as well. So the hi-hat loop at the moment is just like a basic 808 style hi-hat. And what I'm gonna do is just unmap the volume here. And then I'm gonna make the rate a little bit longer. I think I'm actually gonna unsync it. Have it moving quite slowly. And then I'm just gonna sort of click around and make some shapes. Maybe something like this, double click. Right, maybe we can do some little bends here as well. And so now I'm gonna go over here and just turn on my filter. And you can see if I click on it, you can see it looks like this. And I'm just gonna experiment with just hitting some other filter types and uh, see what sort of effects that causes. I'm gonna also, um, route the LFO here to the filter cutoff and a little bit to the resonance as well. Maybe a little bit to this variable slider as well because what this variable slider is, it actually uh, controls this uh, slider over here that changes with different filter modes. So we have it morph there and that will just morph between like multiple different filters over here. So that's a cool little effect as well. Now it's moving around. Maybe I could bring a this comb filter. And what you can also do here is, is experiment with this uh, swing and this phase and the uh, pulse width mod modulation as well. So this is actually gonna speed up and slow down this line from moving around. So now we have some different uh, interesting effects that sort of move and speed up and slow down and um, 
yeah, maybe I can make this rate a little bit slower as well. I like that sort of phasing effect that it has on my hats. It's going to just be really subtle and sit in the background, but it's going to change and modulate and move those hats a little bit around as well. Okay, so now we're getting into a little bit more creative style stuff, and we're going to look at how we can use LFO tool to actually be triggered by MIDI. So instead of being an LFO, now it's acting like an envelope, which is triggering every time it receives a MIDI note. So there's this MIDI section here, right? And there's this note re-trig. This is the the thing that we want to click. I'm going to click it twice and you can see that it's going to switch to envelope mode. So now there's the little ENV signifying that it's in envelope mode and it's going to re-trigger every time it gets a MIDI note like I mentioned earlier. So now to actually route some MIDI into LFO tool, there's a few different ways of doing this, but firstly, we need to get the MIDI source that we want. So I want this kick drum MIDI source here. And if I make a new chain over here, I've actually, it's already in an instrument rack, but if it's not, just hit Command G, show the chain list over here, and then just right click, create a new chain. And once you've created this new chain here, right, you can see there's this MIDI, there's this line bobbing up and down representing every time a MIDI note is triggered but there's actually no audio coming through and that's because there's nothing on the actual track that's triggering audio. So what we can actually do is send this MIDI that's coming out of here to LFO tool. And one way of doing that in Ableton is by going into instruments and grabbing an external instrument, dragging it on here, and then the MIDI 2 section, you just need to select which track LFO tool is on. So we're on the kick track and it's automatically going to select the LFO tool in the sub folder here and it's just going to be sending this MIDI straight to this LFO tool. Once it's in envelope mode which you can see over here that it is, you'll see that now whenever the kick plays it triggers this thing to restart. So we can have a look here. So every time the kick plays it restarts. It doesn't go through the whole cycle because it's really slow at the moment and uh, it's just playing every time the kick plays. So we have a lot of possibilities here. If I was to put the LFO tool here on this bass track, then we'd be like side chaining the bass to the kick with uh, a, a breakbeat style kick. So you can use LFO tool to actually side chain breakbeat style kicks and non four to the floor style kick drum patterns as well, which is a great tool to use. Uh, but I'm actually going to, in this case, drag this LFO tool onto this texture loop here. It just sounds like this. Uh, it's just in the chain as well. And I'm just going to drag it onto this texture loop. So it's just affecting the texture loop here. So let's just play around with some different shapes and see how that goes. That's a cool little groove that we have going on. Maybe we could um, assign a, a filter to it and get the filter moving around as well. So I've just got this multi LH filter here and it's just two filters combined in one. So this frequency uh, slider here is just like a second cutoff for this second filter here. And this variable slider is going to modulate this. So I'm just gonna map a little bit of that, a little bit of this, maybe a little bit of resonance as well, and just see what happens. It's a cool sort of whipping style effect. Let's play it with the snare drum and see how it goes. So playing it with the snare drum, I think it's a little bit early. I want it to go a little bit later. So I'm actually going to unsync the rate here and then just try and find a rate that is similar to that, but like a little bit different. All 
I think that is good. It's a little bit slower than one eighth, and it makes it so when this ramps up, it sort of ramps into that snare drum really nicely. So far, I think that is a cool sort of effect. All right, so let's use an LFO tool to modulate some processing or this reverb that I have on this snare. So what I'm trying to achieve here is a kind of like swelling reverb effect. So let's, um, let's actually make this a parallel processing chain first. So I'm just gonna right click and make a dry chain in this audio effect rack. And then, um, oh. and then in this reverb chain, what I'm gonna do is grab an LFO tool and just put it behind it. We have to do a few things here. So, so you can hear that every time the snare triggers, it also triggers this reverb. Uh, but if we were to put this all the way down, you can hear now the reverb is like pumping. This is a pretty cool effect as is, but let's uh, maybe play with it a little bit more. Maybe I want it to be like a half rate. I'm just gonna turn these off. I think I want this reverb tail to be swelling into the next uh, snare hit. And what's actually happening is the start of the bar is here and the snare hits in the middle of the bar. So to actually get this effect, I need to move this snare hit to the start of the bar. So what I need to do is get this LFO tool to be triggered by the snare hits instead of just by the rate here. So we're going to be doing the same thing that we just did. I'm going to double click this note retrig over here to put it into envelope mode. And then the same thing that we did earlier, just show this chain list and make a new chain. Not actually put anything on here, but an external instrument device, which is gonna be routing the MIDI back into the same track that we have. And it's just automatically, you're gonna select this LFO tool. And then now it's gonna be triggered by the snare drum MIDI instead of just being triggered, or instead of just running freely. So now you can see the, the hit is right at the start instead of uh, in the middle here. So I think I want to make the decay time a little bit bigger and then maybe just turn up this reverb chain. So now we're getting this sort of swelling effect with the reverb into the next snare. And to play it with the rest of the track, it's going to sound like this. So I want this swelling effect to occur less often and you could actually just like solo this chain and resample it if you wanted to. But in this case, I don't want to do that. I want to just be able to control it so it occurs less frequently. So how do we do this? Well, I can't just change the rate to be longer because it's going to just keep re-triggering. And as you can see, it's never going to get to the end here. So what we do to resolve this is I'm just going to make a new tr MIDI track here. And I'm going to use this MIDI track as a snare reverb uh, trigger. And so now we can just, I'm just going to drag that above. And let's say I want to trigger this note here. So what I'm going to do is just grab this external instrument thing that we set up earlier and just drag it onto this trigger track. And then uh, as you can see down here, it's still routing to that LFO tool. Nothing has changed. And then we can just trigger it to occur whenever we want. So I can delete this chain now and, uh, and hide this. And then this LFO tool is just getting triggered by the MIDI notes on this track. Of course, the, these MIDI notes aren't actually triggering anything but the uh, LFO tool here. So now we can have a look. So obviously we don't want it to be playing all the time except for when we're triggering here. So one way to resolve this is by putting it onto note 
gate mode. Now with note gate mode, it's gonna be off the whole time, but it's only gonna be triggered for the length or the duration of this MIDI note. So as soon as this MIDI note stops playing, it's also gonna stop this LFO cycle here. You can see here that the MIDI note triggers it, but it stops around here and it doesn't get to the end. And we want it to reach the end, remember? So we need to design a note that's the same length as this rate here. So one half of a bar. So I'm gonna go in here and make this MIDI clip a half bar long. I'm gonna go in here and drag out this note to be half a bar long as well. And then now it's gonna trigger here and stop here. And that's the effect that we want to get, right? So let's have a listen to this. It's pretty cool because now with this thing, I can just copy this and drag it around onto any snare drum and wherever I put it, it's gonna make this effect. It's gonna trigger it to occur again. So we could, um, I could make this a big MIDI clip and then make these triggering randomly and have this effect happen randomly, or I could trigger it where I want it to occur. So maybe I could also, uh, when this snare hits, I could take out these hats. It's gonna build a bit of tension as well. So have a listen. So it's a pretty cool technique and it's working well so far. Next, I'm gonna show you how I used LFO tool to create this pad chop effect. All right, so what I'm gonna do first of all is uh, just open up this LFO tool and turn off these two things and then make sure my grid is on eight. And then I'm just gonna make this shape like a basic flat zero. And what I'm gonna do is hold shift and choose some grid lines to make some sort of marks on. I'm gonna make one here, maybe one there, and maybe one here, and maybe like this stepping effect, right? And what I'm gonna do then is just drag these nodes around and sort of shape it so it, uh make some interesting sort of pattern. So maybe we could click that one and then just drag this around and maybe same here, drag this. Maybe delete this node as well. Drag. So it's modulating the volume here um, by this pattern. I've just curved the edges of all of these and then just swelled into this first one, nothing too crazy. We can also assign to cutoff and resonance here as well. So, Of course, this isn't doing anything at the moment, so I just need to turn on this filter here and then we can have a look. I'm gonna try out that LH12 filter again because I kind of liked it from before and then uh, sort of just tweak this a bit. Maybe pull up the drive a bit. So it's a little bit annoying at the moment. Uh, maybe we can put some delay on. It's occurring really quickly and I think I actually want this to be triggered by something else in my project that's not just a rate of one quarter. I think I want it to be triggered by this kick drum. So what I'm gonna do in this case is actually make another chain and uh, do the same thing. So maybe I could just copy this external instrument, paste it here, and then just route it to the pad chop one instead. So it's already routed straight to that LFO tool really easy to do. Then click this so it's on envelope mode. Now it's giving us a bit more of a pattern and uh, a little bit less repetitive, uh, a little bit less annoying as well. So have a listen. And you can see that it is being triggered by these kick drums here as well. So the shorter distance between these ones sort of makes it repeat a bit quicker and then it uh, goes back to this one. I 
think that's a cool effect so far, but we can experiment even further. And remember that this MIDI information over here, it's not actually making any sound or making any notes. It's just a kick drum MIDI here. And we have a whole bunch of MIDI effects that we can use to change this MIDI before it gets sent to the LFO tool. So let's experiment with something. You could use maybe like note length or, um, or some sort of envelope device or some sort of random device. I'm gonna use an arpeggiator in this case and sort of just experiment with this and see what effects this has to uh, the rhythm of this. Let's have a look. So it's actually pretty funny what's happening here uh, is you can see that every time the note plays here, this kick drum note, you see that this uh, arpeggiator is just arpeggiating it really, really quickly to the point where it can't even get to this first section. And then between each note, it's like it's being triggered at the end of each note instead of being triggered at the start. So... Um, so the, the end of the note is actually what's releasing it and allowing this uh, and allowing this LFO tool to go through the cycle instead of the start, which is giving it this interesting feel. And what's great about this is because this is all processing on top of the audio, you can actually just like sub out this audio. You can just swap it out for any audio that you like. You can just go grab anything and put it in there and see what effect it has. So I could just move this audio to the side and go grab a different style of pad and have a look and see what that does. So maybe this one, let's have a look. Slightly different uh, vibe, maybe this one. Let's say I wanted this, I wanted to use this, I could uh, right click and then freeze the track and then I could make a new audio track and just drag this over into the audio. And then I could unfreeze this track and delete it and bring this other audio back over and maybe I could, uh, I could process this audio down here differently and maybe add some reverb to it and chop it up and, and move it around um, and then have that playing in the background and have this one playing over the top and have them sort of uh, playing off each other. So there's so many different variations of things that you can do here, it really is endless. Right, so now I've just done exactly that. I used a different pad sound and then I chopped it up. Uh, I froze the track from here and dragged it in here and then put some reverb on it, which gives it a nice little bit of atmospheric contrast to this one. So I'll play it and show you what it sounds like. So it still remains familiar to us in its rhythm and its groove, but it's different, it's processed differently, and it works with this other one really nicely. So that's it for today. Hope you've enjoyed the video. There's so much you can do with LFO Tool. You can really dive into this world of MIDI triggering and creative possibilities. If you've enjoyed the video today, remember to leave a like or subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you in the next one.